cadence is a musical punctuation mark or endpoint that signifies the completion of a musical phrase or section. It is like a musical full stop or comma, indicating a temporary or final resting point in the music. Cadences are formed by specific chord progressions that create a sense of closure, often providing a satisfying resolution to the listener's ear. They play a crucial role in shaping the overall structure and flow of a musical composition by guiding the listener through the journey of tension and release within the music. The first cadence we will go over is the half cadence. A half cadence is when a phrase or section of music ends on a five chord, typically in root position. A half cadence leaves the listener with a feeling of expectation or anticipation as if the musical idea is not yet complete. This harmonic device is commonly used to build tension or suspense, setting the stage for further musical development or resolution in subsequent phrases or sections. The term half cadence originates from binary musical form where the conclusion of the first section often lands on a five chord leaving the first section unresolved, thus allowing the natural flow into the second section from the five chord. One of the most captivating introductions to a piano concerto is found in Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 4. The particular use of repeated notes and softly expressive playing leaves a lasting impression on any listener. Beethoven begins the piece with a one chord, alternating back and forth between the five and the one chord until establishing a standard two to five chord progression. The phrase concludes on a five chord, leaving it open-ended for the orchestra to enter and to continue the exposition of the first movement. Take a listen to this exquisite introduction. In music, a fantasy is a form characterized by its free-flowing structure, allowing for improvisatory elements and thematic development without strict adherence to traditional formal conventions. Fantasies often showcase the composer's creativity and virtuosity, offering a platform for exploration and expression. One notable example of a fantasy is Mozart's Fantasy in C minor, K475. Written in 1785, this piece is a remarkable demonstration of Mozart's mastery of form and expression. Mozart employs the half cadence as a linking device, facilitating a smooth transition between the various sections of the fantasy. This technique ensures a seamless flow between the contrasting musical ideas, contributing to an overall cohesion and unity of the composition. Now let's delve into how composers conclude sections, phrases, or entire pieces by employing different cadences. Each cadence imparts a distinct sense of closure and contributes to the overall mood of the piece. All cadences ultimately resolve to the tonic chord, and the chord preceding it determines the type of cadence. Moreover, the voicing of the tonic chord can further define the cadence. The first cadence we'll explore is the plagal cadence. Instead of utilizing the dominant chord, which contains a leading tone, providing a strong sense of closure, composers may opt for the subdominant chord, or the four chord, to conclude a piece. This choice imparts a softer conclusion since there's no leading tone, 
yet there's still a sense of resolution when landing on the tonic chord. It's often referred to as the Amen chord due to its frequent use in hymns to finalize or conclude with an Amen, where the Ah falls on the four chord and Men on the tonic. One of the most renowned examples of the plagal cadence can be found in Handel's oratorio, The Messiah. In the iconic section titled Hallelujah, Handel employs the plagal cadence drawing from hymnal traditions to conclude this segment of his piece. There's a tangible sense of closure, yet the transition from the four chord to the one chord maintains a roundness or softness. Let's take a moment to listen to this powerful employment of the plagal cadence in the Messiah. Next, let's explore Brahms' Capriccio in B minor. This piece encompasses various moods, fitting its title Capriccio, which implies freedom, impulsiveness, and unpredictability. The energetic piece gradually winds down towards the end, ultimately losing all its energy while chromatically descending. Surprisingly, the final chords are a major four chord, transitioning to a minor four chord, before eventually resolving on the tonic chord in B minor. Let's listen to this delicate conclusion in Brahms' Capriccio. Now our final example of the plagal cadence comes from the modern era of music, a well-known prelude from Debussy entitled The Girl with the Flaxen Hair. This piece opens ambiguously until Debussy finally utilizes the plagal cadence to establish the key. In the key of G flat major, Debussy employs a C flat major chord to solidify the introduction in the home key of G flat major. All these pieces share a common thread where the use of the plagal cadence provides a sense of completion, ending on the tonic chord, but without the strong resolution of a leading tone. Instead, it offers a subtle yet definitive conclusion to these pieces or phrases. Let's take a moment to listen to this characteristic use of the plagal cadence in Debussy's The Girl with the Flaxen Hair. Now let's delve into the next category of cadences known as authentic cadences, which encompass two variations. Firstly, we have the imperfect authentic cadence. This type of cadence occurs when a piece or section concludes with the five or dominant chord in root position, moving to the one or tonic chord in root position. But the top note of the tonic chord isn't the tonic itself. Despite this, we still experience a sense of closure and resolution. By utilizing either the third or fifth scale degree in the tonic chord, the ending achieves an open and expansive sound while still providing a feeling of resolution and finality. In the middle of the first theme of Debussy's Claire de Lune, there's a notable employment of chord inversions that I discussed in a previous video on how composers use inversions. If you're interested in that, here's the link. This authentic cadence serves as a foundation for establishing the main theme. Debussy initiates with an A-flat 7 chord, then transitions to a D-flat chord with the top note being A-flat. This subtle yet effective use of an imperfect authentic cadence underscores Debussy's genius in employing seemingly simple elements to create iconic musical moments. It not only reintroduces the main theme, but also solidifies the tonic key. Take a listen.
The most common and frequently used cadence to conclude a piece, section, or phrase is the perfect authentic cadence. Similar to the imperfect authentic cadence, it requires the progression of a five chord to a one chord, but with a notable distinction. In the one chord, the top note is the tonic note. This provides a strong sense of closure and framing as the tonic note encompasses the entire chord, conveying a feeling of total completion. Let's explore an example from Chopin's Nocturne in E-flat. Despite Chopin's intricate harmonic weaving and his delay in resolving to the tonic E-flat, he achieves a conclusive finish to the phrase by establishing a B-flat dominant 7 chord that smoothly transitions to an E-flat major chord. Both the bass note and the melody note in the one chord are E-flat, offering a profound sense of fulfillment and resolution. Take a listen. The final example illustrating the perfect authentic cadence is the ending of the first movement of Beethoven's Pathetique Sonata. This serves to demonstrate how a perfect authentic cadence sounds in a minor key, a characteristic feature often found in Beethoven's compositions for providing a solid resolution at the conclusion of a piece. Beethoven sets up a G dominant 7 chord, which then resolves to the tonic minor 1 chord. Both the top and bottom notes of this chord are C. What's particularly clever is how Beethoven structures the piece. The beginning and end of the first movement occur in the exact same location on the piano with identical voicing. This repetition underscores the tragic nature of the piece. Despite the journey undertaken, it concludes in the same position. It's a masterful use of the subtle psychological impact of returning to the starting point, emphasizing the inevitability of fate. This craftsmanship by Beethoven echoes the struggles depicted in stories where protagonists attempt to alter their predetermined outcomes, only to find themselves drawn back to the same fate. Take a listen. Now let's delve into the next cadence known as the deceptive cadence. This cadence creates expectations by using a five chord and then delays the resolution by not proceeding to the tonic. Instead, the composer progresses to the six chord. Depending on whether the piece is in a major or minor key, the six chord can be either major or minor. This delay in resolution serves to heighten the drama of the piece. To illustrate, let's consider how a deceptive cadence might be employed in a movie, perhaps in a superhero film. Imagine a scene where the protagonist, the hero, seemingly defeats the antagonist, the villain. We as viewers believe the conflict has been resolved. However, our expectations are subverted when the villain unexpectedly reappears indicating that the resolution has been prolonged. This scenario mirrors the effect of a deceptive cadence, where the anticipated resolution is delayed by subverting our expectations. Beethoven demonstrates his mastery in prolonging and delaying resolution, skillfully manipulating the listener's expectations. A notable instance occurs towards the end of the introduction, just before the stormy first theme emerges. In the key of C minor, Beethoven prepares a G dominant 7 chord, which then resolves to the 6 chord, which is an A flat major chord. This exemplifies the use of a major 6 chord in a minor key. Listen closely to how this major 6 chord provides a sense of potential hope and resolution 
while also prolonging the anticipation of what is to come. In Chopin's Prelude No. 4 in E minor, towards the conclusion of the piece, there's a palpable sense that the music is gradually fading away. Chopin's adept use of the deceptive cadence contributes to this feeling, creating an illusion of fleeting hope before the inevitable conclusion. The deceptive cadence offers a brief glimpse of relief before being swiftly extinguished. In this instance, being in E minor, the deceptive cadence occurs on the major six chord, C major, only to be abruptly dismissed, leading to the tragic conclusion of this piece. Take a moment to listen and feel the emotional weight of this poignant conclusion. So this is an extensive examination of cadences and how they can shape the endings of pieces and phrases or sections. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to check out some of our other videos. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to be up to date with our newest videos.